Welcome back to Jay Smokehouse and the History of Shroom series, Episode 2, Psilocybin and Ancient History, Part 1. Last week I left off with the Mayans in around 1500 BC. However, it wasn't just the Mayans in Central America. It was the Mayan, the Aztec, and the Toltec cultures. They all referred to these mushrooms as Tiananacatl, or Flesh of the Gods. And all these cultures also believe that Tiananacatl was given to their ancient ancestors by Quetzalcoatl, and that is the god that they believe that created life. Now, it's actually pretty cool, I think, that it spans all these cultures and they all believe the same thing, that it came from the gods, and that it would actually bring them closer to the gods. They even called it Flesh of the Gods. Pretty cool. And then the mushroom or shroom that I believe that they probably used was either Psilocybe cubensis or Psilocybe mexicana. I'm pretty sure it was probably Psilocybe cubensis. Now, it's called Psilocybe cubensis because it was originally discovered in Cuba, but it's more prevalent in all of the Americas, both North, Central, and South. And not only is it very common, it's supposed to be the easiest mushroom with psilocybin to cultivate indoors. And so not only common in all the Americas, but also common even today. In fact, apparently, if you've ever had shrooms, you've probably had Psilocybe cubensis. At least that's what I've read. Now, moving on to Siberia. Now, this has a little less tangible evidence. This is more stories and information that's been passed down. But also, this is a different mushroom than Psilocybe. It is Amanita muscaria. It is a white-stemmed and red-capped mushroom. It's actually very beautiful, and it has white spots usually on the red cap. I find them beautiful to look at. It's kind of like how a poppy flower is just beautiful. This is just a beautiful mushroom. But they're also a little bit different than psilocybe. They apparently have much more of a disassociative effect than psilocybe. And apparently this would have been crucial for ancient peoples in Siberia, which just so happens to be the coldest place that people inhabit on Earth. Apparently, I've heard that it gets down to negative 71 Celsius. <laughs> but it really starts to make sense when you think about the disassociative effects of Amanita muscaria. And not only humans, but apparently reindeer love these things. And they will eat them any chance they get. And I've even read that ancient peoples and even peoples today will use or drink the urine of reindeer because it will have psychoactive effects from eating these mushrooms. Pretty cool. Pretty gross, but pretty cool. But like I said, this isn't as tangible evidence as the rock carvings and wall carvings in Mayan and Aztec and Toltec cultures. This is just stories that have been handed down and rumors. But I mean, when you think about it, it really starts to make sense when you think about what Amanita muscaria can do for you. It must really help to live in that type of climate to have something like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up episode two. But next week, in episode three on part two of the ancient history, I'm going to be going over more of the Western known world. You know, Greece, Rome, ancient Egypt, those type of places. And I really hope that you'll join me for episode three. Now, if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything, please leave a like and a comment. And let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button if you want to stay up to date with videos coming out in the future. And now, as always, Jay is going to go smoke a Jay.